How's it going everyone? It's Chow here and today we are going to talk a little bit about sticklebacks and PIDX1. So this particular topic gets a lot of people really riled up and confused, but hopefully we can go through it and try to simplify things just a little bit. So let's get started. First of all, some background information. So the three-spine stickleback is actually a type of fish that oftentimes is marine in its lifestyle, so it lives in the ocean, but it spawns in freshwater. So what actually ended up happening is over time, in the past when the ice sheets receded in North America, it opened up a lot of new ponds and streams for the fish to spawn. So the fish started swimming up these streams into these ponds and lakes, and they started, well, making more of themselves. But what's really interesting is that over time, these ponds and streams slowly, bit by bit, became blocked off from the ocean. So the fish that were still in the ponds and streams effectively became locked into these ponds and streams and couldn't get themselves out back into the ocean. So now these populations are isolated, stranded in these streams and ponds. So they have to go through some morphological changes to adapt to these new environments. And one of these changes that we often actually kind of see is by, well, their physical appearance and what they actually look like. In the marine habitat, there's not a lot of places to hide and there are a lot of predators. So the fish actually grew a lot of these armored like plates on the back and they also have big massive spines on their bodies. And that made the fish much harder to swallow after they got caught by a big predator. But when these fish became trapped in the small little ponds, right, in the interiors, in the freshwater regions, there really aren't that many big predators that have moved into those areas yet. So freshwater actually had a little bit of a detriment to the fish because in these freshwater ponds, there weren't big predators that can grab them and, you know, swallow them, but rather you had small predators that can latch on to their spines and catch them. And one of these predators was the dragonfly larvae. So the dragonfly larvae, before they, the dragonflies mature and take to the air and fly off, they're kind of small little predators that live in, in freshwater and they catch fish and insects and other animals. And what was apparently the, the reality for these stickleback that were stuck in these freshwater environments was that the presence of these spines in the pelvic region actually allowed the dragonfly larvae to shoot their little mouth parts out and grab the fish by these spines. So this characteristic, this trait that was normally very beneficial for them in the oceanic marine environments actually became kind of a detriment to them in these freshwater environments. So over time, natural selection acted on the freshwater populations of sticklebacks, and eventually over time, the pelvic spines disappeared because the fish that had the pelvic spines didn't fare so well, whereas those that didn't, or maybe had reduced spines, did a little bit better. And over time, through natural selection as well as sexual selection perhaps, it ended up in a situation where freshwater sticklebacks lost their pelvic spines. So then comes the question of how did that happen? Well, what exactly caused this loss in sort of the genetic sense? And in the past, the general idea is that we see changes in genes that are due to shifts in the genetic coding region. So you see changes, mutations, et cetera, additions within the coding regions of the genes, within the gene itself. So the part of the DNA that actually codes for like a gene product such as a protein. So changes in genes lead to changes in development and that ultimately lead to changes in form. And changes in form are then ultimately due to changes in the genes themselves, as I mentioned. So what exactly caused the change in you know, the form, the body form of that stickleback that lost the spines? Through a series of test crosses, uh, some very smart geneticists were able to track the change in the morphology of the sticklebacks to one specific gene called the PIDX gene, which is a developmental gene. But there was a little bit of a problem because when they actually looked at the coding region of the gene itself, so they looked at the PIDX1 gene itself, it was actually identical between the marine fish as well as the freshwater fish. 
So the gene itself is exactly the same. And the protein that the PIDX1 encodes didn't actually change either. So what in the world is going on? What's happening with these fish that are losing spines but doesn't seem to be changing any expression in the proteins within that specific gene coding region? So the scientists then decided to do something else and they injected some chemical dyes into the fish embryos that turned kind of a bluish purple color in any tissues where PIDX1 mRNA was made. So remember, PIDX1 is the gene. You have like an RNA polymerase that comes in and you transcribe the gene to make mRNA. So they were testing these fish embryos to see where the mRNA was made. And in a marine stickleback, you could see that there is this region over here. Well, you know, you have the mouth parts as well, but more specifically, in this particular pelvic region, you have a dark purplish blue spot, which suggests that PIDX1 mRNA was being expressed in the pelvic area. In freshwater stickleback, however, this is absent. So mRNA from, transcribed from the PIDX1 gene was not expressed in the pelvic region. So what exactly was going on? If the gene itself isn't different, what's the difference? What's making the change in the expression of the genes? Well, what they found out was that, again, the structure of the PIDX1 protein was identical and that the expression of the PIDX1 was the same except in the pelvis. So the PIDX1 is expressed in a couple of different regions like the jaw, um, but it's not different in the freshwater and the saltwater fish. The only difference was in the pelvic region. So what they found out was that the switch that regulated PIDX1 expression in the pelvis had disappeared in the fish without pelvic spines. So what that means is that it's not the gene itself that is changed, but some regulatory switch that's upstream, in this case upstream from the gene that changed. So because the deletion of that particular regulatory switch only affected that regulatory switch that regulates the pelvic spines, the pelvic production of PIDX1, the PIDX1 gene was able to remain fully functional throughout the rest of the body. And that, of course, has a huge effect on the development of the fish, but ultimately the fish is still fine and alive. And in fact, it's even doing better because without those pelvic spines, you can't get grabbed by dragonfly larvae. So in marine sticklebacks, this is what it actually looks like. You have a pelvic switch over here, a jaw switch over here, and a pituitary switch over here. And again, these are regulatory switches. Uh, sometimes you might hear them as enhancers or silencers. In this case, we're talking about enhancers that are in an area that's separate from the gene itself. So the PIDX1 gene that codes for the PIDX1 protein is actually down here in the blue. Whereas these regulatory switches are up here, in this case, upstream from the gene itself. And during transcription, you know, you have your transcription factors that bind to these regions, these enhancers, these regulatory switches. And then you also bind like general transcription factors. And long story short, you also link to kind of a, a, an RNA polymerase over here. And that's what actually transcribes the genes. Again, that's something you'll cover in BI 108 if you decide to take that class or if you have to take that class. And that's what actually happens in marine sticklebacks. But in freshwater sticklebacks, the pelvic switch is shut off. So they actually lost this entire switch completely. That section of DNA was deleted. So without the regulatory switch in the pelvic region, again, the pelvic switch has been deleted, that sequence of DNA is completely gone. They were unable to utilize that specific section of the enhancer to enhance the production of PIDX1 proteins within that specific region of the body. So ultimately, the pituitary switch is still working in freshwater species, and also the jaw switch is also working. So you still have enhancement and production of PIDX1 in freshwater fish within their pituitary and within their jaw. However, because the pelvic switch has been deleted, they were unable to produce the protein for the pelvic region, and that results in them not being able to have pelvic spines. So generally, in summary, uh, just an overview of everything that has happened, marine sticklebacks were naturally selected for pelvic spines because 
the pelvic spines prevented them from getting killed by predators, being made them a little bit harder to swallow. However, freshwater sticklebacks were naturally selected against pelvic spines because of dragonfly larvae predation. The presence of spines made them more likely to get grabbed. And we found out that the regulation of this is due to this particular protein that's produced by the PIDX1 gene. But the PIDX1 gene was not affected, so it's the same in freshwater and marine sticklebacks. The change then was most likely something that occurred in another region of the genome. And we found out that through some testing that in freshwater sticklebacks, it's the enhancer, which is a regulatory switch for the development of the proteins that ultimately produce the pelvic spines that was deleted. However, other enhancers were not affected. So the jaw switches, right? And the pituitary switches, those were still functioning. So you still had PIDX1 expression in the pituitary regions as well as the jaw regions. But because the pelvic switch regions, the pelvic switch enhancer has been deleted, they were not able to express uh, PIDX1 in the pelvis. And that, of course, resulted in them not being able to produce spines. So ultimately, that resulted in a major change in body morphology, but the organism itself can survive well. And in fact, it's doing much better because now without those spines, they have decreased the ability for dragonfly larvae to catch them, which is a great thing. So natural selection actually acted against a specific trait that was for that particular specific trait in another type of habitat, which is really awesome. But ultimately, I think the take-home message about this particular stickleback worksheet and scenario is that we find out through the study of sticklebacks that many organismal changes in the body morphology of different species, they aren't due to gene modification. So you're not actually changing the sequences of the genes themselves, but rather you're modifying regulatory switches like enhancers and silencers that can be downstream or upstream, so modulators of those genes. And by changing the modulators of those genes, you can save the gene and not mess the gene, but rather use different sequences of DNA to affect how much of that gene is produced and where that gene is produced or where the gene shouldn't be produced in this particular case. And again, these shifts to modulators, these regulatory switches that are upstream or downstream of the gene itself, allows you to sort of tinker with the particular evolutionary processes without actually completely perhaps getting some mutation that knocks out the gene itself and ultimately destroys the function and survival of the fish. So hopefully that made a little bit of sense and uh, sticklebacks are pretty cool little organisms but they can cause a little bit of problems when it comes to uh, getting an understanding of evolutionary processes. So I hope you found this particular video useful. And as always, feel free to email your professors as well as your student tutors if you have any questions. And uh, best of luck studying and best of luck on that exam as well.